All right, here's your notes for chapter two. Uh, yes, we start at chapter section 2.2 right here. We are going to be talking about conditional statements. And right now, what you need to do is loosen up your wrist, maybe stretch out your fingers a little bit, get your favorite pen or pencil that writes nice and smoothly because we are going to write full sentences, capital letters, periods, not math, or at least not the math that you're used to. Um, so it's not just a quick, simple, easy x equals 7. You are going to write full out conditional statements. So what is a conditional statement? It has an hypothesis, which is an if. Hopefully you have a handout for this part of it. You shouldn't be writing down all the problems and all the information. It's just the answers that we need. So if you have your handout, go find it. A hypothesis that has an if and a conclusion that has a then, kind of like science. Uh, science has a hypothesis and a conclusion. We're going to say if this happens, then this is going to be the result of it. But we're going to apply it to geometry and some math, logic, and reasoning. Okay, a converse compared to a conditional statement is when you exchange the hypothesis and the conclusion. You take whatever was the if statement, it becomes the then statement, you switch the then to the if. Uh, let me give you a quick example. Um, if a deer crosses the road, then I will slam on my brakes. Okay, that's a conditional statement. If a deer crosses the road, then I will slam on my brakes. Converse of that would be if I slammed on my brakes, then a deer crossed, crossed the road. Not necessarily always true. That would be a false uh, converse because Maybe a deer did cross the road. Maybe I slammed on my brakes because it was a person or a ball or because there was somebody in front of me. I don't know. But you take the if, you take the then, you swap places with them. And then we're going to also learn biconditional statements. That is when a conditional statement and its converse are both true. They both have to be true so that the example that I just gave wouldn't work. If they are both true, you can write them as a single Biconditional, which instead of saying if this, then this, it will have the phrase if and only if between the hypothesis and the conclusion. If is the hypothesis, then is the conclusion. But in a biconditional, the hypothesis and the conclusion can go either way. If this, then this. If this, then that. It works both ways. So you take out the if, you take out the then, you put an if and only if in between the hypothesis and the conclusion. That's, in a nutshell, the three sentences that we're going to work with, and you'll practice it so you get the hang of it. Two more pieces of information about the biconditional statement. You have to write it in the exact same order as the conditional statement was. Whatever the hypothesis was is still the hypothesis in the biconditional statement. You do not use any commas. There's no punctuation other than the period at the end when you write a biconditional statement. So I will give you examples of all of these so that they start to make more sense. Example number one. Again, this should be on your handout. You shouldn't have to write this whole thing down. If a number is divisible by 9, comma, because we pause after the hypothesis, then it is divisible by 3. True statement. If a number is divisible by 9, then it is divisible by 3. That's the conditional statement. So what's the hypothesis of that? The hypothesis is a number, notice I didn't put if, if is the signifier, a number is divisible by 9. A number is divisible by 9. That's what we're hypothesizing. Is that number divisible by 9? Conclusion is it is divisible Please spell divisible right. It's not divisible. It's divisible. Divisible by 3. No punctuation, no periods. Those aren't full sentences. We didn't put the if in the hypothesis. Hypothesis. We did not put the then in the conclusion. Um, they are up there in the conditional statement, but not in the results. Converse. You have to write the converse, whether it's true or not. We are going to take the word if and rearrange, we can't put if a number is divisible by 9. We're going to start with if, and we're going to work with the conclusion first. 
if it is divisible by 3. Now, here's where I get to give an English lesson. Not my favorite, but I get it. Um, in English, you have something called a pronoun. He, she, it, him, his, hers, their. Um, you can't use a pronoun unless you know what you're talking about. You can't say, she went to the bathroom. Who went to the bathroom? I don't know who she is. You have to have a noun to talk about it. You could say, Molly is not in class. She went to the bathroom. Because now you have Molly as your subject. You know who you're talking about. So I can't take my conclusion and just say, if it is Ms. Y by three. I don't know what it is. Who's it? What's it? You have to use a noun to start your converse. What is that noun that you're working with? It's the same noun that was used in the conditional statement and the hypothesis. If a number, so we are going to work with that same noun. If a number, so it starts the same as the conditional statement. If a number, now we can switch it to the hypothesis and the conclusion. Now our conclusion comes first. If a number is divisible by 3, is divisible by 3, comma. If a number is divisible by 3, yes, you're going to get it marked wrong if you forget the comma. We're writing conditional statements and commas. If a number is divisible by 3, then, then, take the hypothesis, but now we don't need to repeat ourselves in what our subject is. Now we can say it, because we know that it is the number. Then it is divisible by 9, period, at the end. Yes, every time, comma, period. If a number is divisible by 3, then it is divisible by 9. That's a converse. Next up, biconditional. Biconditional. Let's go back up to the definition of biconditional because we went through that quickly. When a conditional statement and its converse are both true. Oh. Let's check our converse. If a number is divisible by 3, then it is also divisible by 9. And by divisible, it means it comes out to be a whole number. Take the easiest number, 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Got it. 6 divided by 9 is not a whole number. Biconditional. So for the biconditional, you're going to say false. There is no biconditional. And if, there, if it is false and there is no biconditional, you need a counterexample. One piece of information that proves that it's not true. If you can come up with one, one example, it makes the whole entire thing false. The example that I just gave, 6. 6 is a number that's divisible by 3, but it's not divisible by 9. You could use 12, you could use 15, you could use 21. It doesn't matter to me what you use as long as it's false for the converse. There's conditional statement, converse, and biconditional in a nutshell. We're going to do some more... Excuse me, or I just got a hiccup out of nowhere. Um, we're going to do some more practice ones because they're going to get a little bit more complicated than this. Look at all the writing. I just told you that there's going to be a bunch that you have to fix. All right. If three points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. Again, you shouldn't have to write this whole thing out. You should have it on paper. We need a hypothesis and a conclusion. We'll start with the hypothesis. I'm hoping that you guys can see this. I, I used some fancy pens and some cool writing because I wanted you wanted it to be more fun when I write with colored writing, but maybe there's too much of a glare. I think it's okay. So I'm writing the hypothesis. Don't use the word if. My hypothesis, oh, I want white, is that three points are collinear. There. We at least have a sentence that has some geometry terms in it instead of just math. Three points are collinear. Conclusion, then, don't write then, they lie on the same line. Three 
points are collinear is our hypothesis. They lie in the same line is our conclusion. What do we do with that? Now we write the converse of it. Take the if, take the then, switch places with them, but don't forget the noun, the subject that we have to start this with. Converse, if three points, if three points, we have to start with the subject, if three points. Hey, this section would be a good section to practice your cursive writing. I know mine's a little bit of a combo of cursive and printing, but you could practice if you wanted to get good at cursive. If three points, now switch your conclusion and your hypothesis. If three points lie on the same line, comma, then, now we can use they, then they, but now you have to go back up to the hypothesis, are collinear. Period at the end. Capital letter, comma, period. If three points, subject, lie on the same line, then they, pronoun, are collinear. Take a look at that converse. We're going to try to make a biconditional out of it. It lets me move this, yeah. A biconditional, if the conditional statement and the converse are true, which in this case, if three points lie on the same line, then they are collinear. If three points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. That's the whole entire definition of collinear. So if you have a definition of a word, it better work forward and backwards all the time if it's a true definition. So if we're going to do the biconditional statement now, go back up and look at our previous notes. It says when they're both true, you can write a biconditional. The word if and only if goes between the hypotenuse and hypothesis and the conclusion. You have to write it in the same order as the conditional statement. Go look at your conditional statement. If three points are collinear, then they lie in the same line. We are going to keep that same order, take out our if and then. So this time, it's going to start with three points. Three points in the same order as our conditional statement way up at the top. Three points are collinear. No commas. We're not doing if and then. Three points are collinear if and only if they now if we go back up and look at the conditional statement, three points are collinear if and only if they lie on the same line. They lie on the same line. And since that is absolutely true, we don't need a counterexample. Three points, three points are collinear if and only if they lie on the same line. Converse is true, biconditional is true, Biconditional is in the exact same order as the conditional statement, but reworded. If and only if automatically means it works forward and backwards. You can take the if and the then and make the then and the if, and it still is a true statement. Number three, a right angle has a measure of 90 degrees. Conditional statement. Here we go again. A right angle has a measure of 90 degrees. Ooh. Before we said, what's the hypothesis? What is the conclusion? We don't have a hypothesis and a conclusion because we don't have a conditional statement. This doesn't say if you have this, then you have that. So we need a conditional statement out of that. We have to turn if a right angle, if a right angle then has a measure of 90 degrees, somehow we got to get an if and then in there. But please make sure it works in English. You can't say if a right angle then has a measure of 90 degrees. We need a subject still. We need to know what we're talking about. What are we talking about in this case? We're talking about an angle. So we can put that information in. If, I'm going to go white again. If an angle, because that's what we're going to be talking about. If an angle, what about that angle? If an angle 
is a right angle. Yes, we put in our own subject, but everybody should put the same subject in because we're talking about an angle up there. If an angle is a right angle, you wouldn't say if a segment is a right angle, if a diagram is a right angle, if a figure is a right angle, you're talking about an angle. If an angle is a right angle, comma, then, and now we can use a pronoun again because we already know our subject is an angle, then it has, oops, I'm writing with my knuckles, then it has a measure of 90, and yes, because they wrote the word degrees, you will write the word degrees with a period at the end. Oh, I need room for the period at the end. Read it in English, make sure it makes sense. If an angle is a right angle, then it has a measure of 90 degrees. All right, now we're gonna do the converse of this conditional statement. We don't have to go back up and look at number three because that's not gonna help us. We wanna look at our new conditional statement. See how important it is to have a good conditional statement because the converse and the biconditional are gonna work off of that. So we go with if an angle, keep the same subject, now we're going with the conclusion has a measure of 90 degrees. Has a measure of 90. And yes, you are writing out the word degrees because that's what they did, comma. Then it, there's our pronoun, switch and go to your conditional statement hypothesis, then it is a right angle. Make sure it sounds right. If an angle has a measure of 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Sounds good. Is it true? Yes, it's true, because that's the definition of right angle. A right angle has 90 degrees. 90 degrees is a right angle. If it's a definition, it's always going to be true. So we are able to write it by a conditional, and let's remember our biconditional must go in order of the conditional statement. Maybe once you try to pause this and write your own biconditional, then turn it back on and see if you got it. All right, we're back. Should have an angle, capitalized of course, there's our subject, is a right angle. If and only if it as a measure of 90 degrees. No punctuation other than the period at the end and capital letter. That doesn't count as punctuation, I don't think. An angle is a right angle if and only if it has a measure of 90 degrees. The order matches the conditional statement, the hypothesis comes first, the conclusion, and it is true. We've got two more. Make them a little bit more difficult. I will go to the mall if it is raining. Not meant to be a trick question, but it is a trick question because it's asking you, do you know what the hypothesis is? And the hypothesis in this case, or in any case, is always following the if. Since the if is in the middle of your statement, that still is where we have to start the problem. Conditional statement. If it is raining. I know it comes last up here in the statement, but it follows the if, which automatically makes it the hypothesis. If it is raining, comma, then, oh, wait a second. You're asking yourself right now, like, wait, you can't use a pronoun in the beginning of a statement. You have to have a noun. You have to have a subject. I just said that like three times. But let's think about this. In real life, in English, when you're talking about the weather, the weather is always referred to as it. Right? I mean, if you go outside, you don't say. You say, it, it's raining out. It's raining. It's sunny. It's snowing. 
it's hailing, it's windy, it's cold, it's warm. You don't say, the weather is hot today. Uh, the weather is raining today. The clouds are making snow today. The, the sky is sunny today. You don't have a subject when you talk about weather. So it is okay for a pronoun if it works in real life and in English, it works in math. Another one would be time. Rarely do people look at their clocks or their watch or their phones probably and say, the time is 1220. They say it's 1220. So time and weather, you can use it. If it is raining, then I will go to the mall. Period. If it is raining, then I'll go to the mall. Converse. If I go to the mall, let's take out will. If I go to the mall, doesn't sound right to say. If I will go to the mall, if I go to the mall, then it is raining. Period. Not true. It says if it's raining, you'll go to the mall. Doesn't say what you're gonna do if it's not raining. If it's not raining, I don't know what you're gonna do, or maybe you'll go to the mall anyway. If I go to the mall, does it have to be raining? No, it does not have to be raining. Therefore, there is no biconditional, or you could say that it's false. No biconditional for that one. False converse. Did I say we only had two more? We have three more. Sorry. Because these get, they're all different. I got to show you some different ones. A dog is a mammal. True. Conditional statement. We need a subject. I dare you to write this. If dog, then mammal. If a dog, then it is a mammal. Now, if what is a dog? We need a subject. Uh, a good subject, because we're talking about them, would be an animal. If an animal. That's pretty normal subject. Don't get all creative and weird on me and say if a species or if a creature. A dog is an animal. Just, it's pretty... Pretty common. If an animal is a dog, comma, then it is a mammal. True. All dogs are mammals. Period. Converse. If an animal, keep your subject, don't change it, is a mammal. then it is a dog, period. I know that that's not true, but you always write the converse no matter what. You always write the converse whether it's true or not. It's the biconditional that you don't write. If an animal is a mammal, then it is a dog. That is false, not true. Uh, a counter example. Hey, here's where you can get creative on a counter example. Please don't just put cat. Everybody else is going to put cat. You got something cool? It better be a mammal. Don't throw down like a shark or something, a penguin. That's not a mammal. If an animal is a mammal, then it is a dog. If it's not, it could be a tiger. I don't know. Any counter example would work for that. Okay, this is the last one. Now you are given a biconditional. Two angles are supplementary if and only if they are a linear pair. Two angles are supplementary if and only if they are a linear pair. You have to make a conditional statement about that. And let me remind you that conditional statements and biconditional statements, get it by, it goes two both ways, like a bicycle has two wheels, okay? Biconditional, you can read it forward, you can read it backwards, but the conditional statement has to stay in order. So if we write the conditional statement, we start with if, but then we use that same subject, if two angles are supplementary. Comma. 
then they are a linear pair. That's our conditional statement. If two angles are supplementary, then they are a linear pair. Keep the exact same order, keep the subject, take the if and only if out, put a comma and an if then. That's the only difference between a biconditional and a conditional. Converse, use this conditional statement, turn it around, converse, if two angles, keep your subject, are, now we switch it, are a linear pair, comma, then they are supplementary. Period. If two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. The converse is true. If two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. That's the whole thing about linear pairs, is that if you have a linear pair, they make one straight line, they must add up to 180. The problem with this one is that the conditional statement is not true. If two angles are supplementary, then they are a linear pair. Is that true or false? The conditional statement, meaning also the biconditional statement, were not true. And sometimes a counterexample is easier with a picture than as words. We have a couple different counterexamples. You could say uh, these two angles, if this is 130 degrees, and this is 50 degrees. Those are supplementary, but they're not a linear pair because they don't have adjacent sides. They don't share a common ray. Uh, you could draw a diagram or you could use a picture. If these are parallel lines, consecutive interior angles. So a counterexample could be consecutive interior angles. It's a lot more to write than it is to draw interior angles of parallel lines. That would be a counterexample. Consecutive interior angles of parallel lines are supplementary, but they are definitely not a linear pair. So this section is going to make you think a little bit, going to make you write a little bit. And for those of you that love math and don't necessarily have English up there at the top of your list of favorite subjects, you're going to have to work at it a little bit. And those of you other way around, like, eh, I can do math, but I really like English. Maybe you can help those others, or you can just thrive through this section. All right. Good luck with that. Hopefully you have some good notes, and please refer to these notes. Keep looking at them and checking them as you do your assignment, as you do your daily quizzes. Make sure you're doing stuff right. Good luck.